Morning ladies and gents and welcome back to the WTF for another quick video and uh, today we're talking about uh, a little favourite of mine, the old uh, Collins uh, PTO um, which um, I happen to have three here but they're slightly, slightly different which I'm going to talk about uh, in a minute. Anyway, it's a beautiful day. Um, I've actually uh, quit and leave uh, for a week from work and uh, this is the first day it's actually been nice and sunny uh, so I thought I'd do some of this uh, outside I mean why not uh, the last few days it's just been uh, chucking it down with rain it's been pretty miserable anyway what we want to do is talk about these um, permeability tuned oscillators um, which um, I've got I've got a thing for these actually because they're a really good way of making a VFO uh, without having to sort of um, break your back and you get a really stable VFO and you can find these uh, quite quite easily off uh, eBay. Anyhow, um, this video which we're going to talk about is actually how to modify uh, one of these uh, so you can actually use it um, as a, uh, a variable frequency oscillator. Um, I've done a video on this previously which uh, if you want to look at you might find it quite interesting. Uh, but um, let's just take a close look at these and I'll tell you uh, well, some of these aren't all what they uh, might seem to be. So as you can see here, we've got three uh, Collins uh, permeability tuned oscillators. Now these came out of various bits of Collins equipment. Now this one I bought a while ago, and this is actually, um, I've used one of these, and you can see it's a bit bigger. They look very similar to the, to the other two, but this is actually an, a, a, an oscillator in itself. And this is from an R390. And and you can see that this is it's got the type uh, of the oscillator there 70H-12 now uh, I picked this up a while ago and uh, I checked this out this one works and it oscillates from about 2.4 to about 3.7 um, megahertz uh, so there's no problem with that now these two here uh, I bought off eBay the other day actually and I, they, they were going for a steal, they were $4 each and I thought to myself, oh those are really nifty, uh, for $4 I can get two more um, PTOs. Uh, however, uh, these are actually come from uh, a Collins R392 and uh, they're actually slightly different. Well first thing is, they're not actually um, uh, variable frequency oscillators in, as you would normally expect. These are actually oscillator mixers uh, which sort of kind of like makes things a little bit more complicated because the output of these um, is actually 455 kilohertz which is fine if you're wanting to build a superhet receiver uh, but if you want to use these on a, as an, in a transmitter um, you can't really use those. You've got to, you've got to have to modify them and, and it's quite a well, it's, it's an easy modification, but you have to be prepared to sort of remove quite a few bits, which I'm going to talk about. Uh, it's quite easy to do, um, but then you can then convert these into a proper uh, permeability tuned oscillator or VFO, um, call it what you like, which you can then uh, use that, uh, what, the output of that you can then use, for instance, for um, you know either frequency doubling or you can use the output on its own, as I've done before, you know, to drive a transmitter. Alternatively, you can um, mix the signal with, say, uh, a signal from a crystal oscillator, and you can then effectively, you know, use what it, use the output of that to, to tune a, uh, a mixer and then uh, a, an oscillator, uh, which is substantially higher in frequency than the output that, that this gives. Uh, so what I'm going to do is I'm going to show you uh, how to modify one of these. Uh, so that we can then use it as a uh, as an oscillator in itself, rather than a uh, an oscillator mixer, which uh, which what it was designed which, what it was designed for. So uh, I'm going to uh, pop back indoors, um, and then we will uh, just take you through a couple of circuit diagrams that I've done, uh, uh, which I've got ready to to show you how this works. Uh, and then you can sh and, and the modifications required to to convert these uh, these oscillator mixers. So 
So what we have here is the circuit diagram of the of the original VFO mixer from the R392 and uh, I'll just go through just a few th slight things to show what modifications I've done to make this thing um, work as a pure VFO rather than the mixer and it's quite simple really there's not much you really have to do so what we're going to do is we're going to get rid of this valve this is obviously a mixer valve which uh, um, we will replace with an EF um, 91 or well that's that's the one I'm going to use you can use whatever you like uh, H smaller small HF um, signal pentode or something like that will work um, this is the 82 this is an 82k grid leak resistor you can keep that if you want I'm going to use 100k um, I'm going to take this one out because it'll probably get the leads will get knackered on it so uh, I'm going to um, probably dispense with that one and replace it. This 15k resistor here um, we'll probably keep as well. We'll use that as a, um, a resistor to reduce the Q of the tune circuit. This is the tune circuit. Now, um, as mentioned, the um, we're going to have to get rid of this because this is designed for 455 kilohertz and we can keep the capacitors here and uh, we will find out what value those are and uh, then we'll find a suitable inductor which will cover about 2, 2.4 to 3.7 or 3.5 megs which is what the PTO uh, covers and uh, I'm, I'm going to probably use an RF choke uh, for that just to save me winding up a coil and trying to mount it inside the uh, the uh, the can and uh, there's also got a 0.5 uh, Millie Henry choke, RF choke there, we can use that if we want, uh, depends on on what it looks like uh, with regards to the leads and how we're going to get into the little box. So we might keep this, we might uh, get rid of it. Um, we, are, we will need an RF choke uh, of this sort of value um, for our B plus coming onto the anode of the, uh, of the uh, EF91. Because the plan is that this tune circuit we're going to put in in series with the anode, and then there'll be an RF choke and some decoupling capacitors. Uh, there is another RF choke actually, which is not shown on this diagram in this heater circuit of this valve, which you can't see it. Uh, again, we can probably dispense with that and just put a decoupling capacitor uh, on, on one side of the uh, heater, and then the other side will be grounded. And uh, that's more or less it, really. Those are the sort of modifications that we'll need to turn this uh, mixer into a, a pure VFO. So if you missed the gist of what I was saying in the uh, uh, last uh, circuit diagram explanation, this, this is uh, basically a, a circuit diagram of the changes that I mentioned. So the enclosed PTO, that's the cylindrical part and you've got three wires or three pins coming out from there uh, the grid cathode and one going to earth the uh, middle one is the cathode and then if you're looking at the cylinder from underneath uh, with the cylinder pointing towards you the the grid is on the right and then the the, uh, the ground uh, pin is, is on your left and, and uh, as mentioned the cathode is in the middle so you this is what you do you, you connect the cathode um, and the suppressor grid of the EF91 together and they go to the cathode pin obviously and then this is the ch the, the the values and the and the changes that I made so that would be the tank tune circuit which is in the little uh, can sitting on the top uh, near the valve and again that, I, that was an RF choke that I used and that's the value of the capacitors that are already there and then uh, so your B plus comes through here and uh, you've got 5.6k resistor which I used um, followed by an RF choke which you can use the original one if you want but I used a slightly smaller one with the leads were less graunched uh, decoupling capacitor obviously um, and the screen supply uh, obviously comes from the 150 volts B plus 22k resistor which is quite a standard value uh, for this type of valve and don't forget to put a decoupling capacitor on the screen grid. Um, and then 100 puff 
uh, capacitor which then is your output for your RF uh, and that's it. Those are the modifications that you need if you have one of these PTOs. I'm just going to show you a bit of a closer look at this uh, PTO now. I've taken the covers off the various bits so you can uh, see what parts we have to remove. And the first thing is obviously this is the, the output tank coil or tune circuit and, uh, and as you can see it's obviously quite large, it's for 455 four, four, kilohertz and unfortunately uh, it's not possible just to remove a few turns of this coil which would make life a bit easier because it is actually very well made uh, this is totally potted and it's it's really solid and uh, what I found on the last uh, PTO, the other one which, I, which is the one I actually uh, modified is that you cannot um, you cannot get this apart it's totally solid so you have to remove this uh, ceramic uh, support which is a bit of a pain but uh, it's uh, it's doable this one is uh, slightly different uh, to the one uh, that I took apart originally now uh, there's certainly less uh, decoupling capacitors uh, but other than that it's pretty much uh, the same really and all this lot here um, you need to get rid of this is the original input for the uh, from a uh, I don't know another local oscillator or a crystal oscillator from the original receiver getting to one of the grids of this um, tube which is a pentagrid converter I think it's a 26B6 uh, heptode these are the outputs from the PTO so that's the grid cathode and that goes to ground and that's about it really so what we'll do is have to take out all this and then remove this part and then put a, an RF choke across there or, an, or a suitable inductor uh, to compensate uh, for, the, for removing this So hopefully once you've taken it all apart and done all the modifications you should end up with something that looks like this and uh, all the bits do fit inside this little compartment and I've got uh, a couple of leads out there for the HT and the, uh, and the heater and everything and if we turn it over bring it around this way you can this is the modification I made to the uh, tank circuit which is just simply moving that coil and placing a, an RF choke that's actually an 11 micro Henry RF choke but if you wanted to you could put a proper coil in there it uh, this does seem to work and I've also got a little 100 puff capacitor which comes off the tune circuit and then that this uh, bar here it goes to the output through this bit of coax so you can connect it to the rest of your transmitter or everything and that's really uh, all there is to it really and uh, yeah it's quite easy to do uh, no major dramas you do feel a bit sorry for taking out the original components but um, unfortunately if you want a VFO uh, and not a mixer oscillator then this is what you have to do Okay, we've got it on the uh, the bench, and I've uh, connected it up to my bench power supply. This thing's quite cool, actually, because uh, my my uh, bench power supply it keeps on going off. Uh, basically, goes up to uh, 72 volts, uh, which is quite handy. And uh, so you don't, I don't need to get out an HD transformer or anything to get this thing to work. Uh, so anyway, I put it all back together and I've connected it up and hey presto we have an output and the beauty of this VFO, as, as I mentioned I think in the previous video when I looked at these Collins PTOs is that they um, they do cover uh, 80 meters or certainly part of it, a good deal of 80 meters without having to uh, open up the uh, tuning mechanism 
ideally you don't really want to open up that cylinder because it's all sealed um, and uh, you know it's got quite a few precision parts in it so hopefully you don't really need to fiddle with that anyhow uh, so there we go uh, Collins PTO's ultra stable uh, if you can find them uh, well these particular ones are cheap as chips a few little modifications and you've got yourself a very stable oscillator uh, which you can then use for whatever you want either receiver or transmitter Anyway, thanks for watching and hope to catch you again soon. Cheers for now.